reading today is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. And if it were to be a school report, I think it might read something like, could do better. When my children were very young, I used to live for sleep. It became an obsession. How many hours I got, how many interruptions, whose turn it was to get up was the most important one. In January 2012, I lived um, for about a month waiting for a phone call from James Cook Hospital. My daughter, who was 11 at the time, had had a, a minor accident um, that went on to develop uh, into a complex neurological problem. And we'd seen loads of different health professionals. And eventually we were sent home from Darlington Hospital with a promise of a referral to James Cook to a specialist team. And I can remember sitting on the couch with her and she was in constant pain um, trying to distract her and just trying to get her through it. Um, and every now and again, I would look out of the window and it was snowing. We had loads of snow that year. And every couple of hours I would get up and I would go and clear the drive just in case the phone rang because I was convinced at any moment that phone call was gonna come. It did eventually after about a month of waiting. But there are times in our lives when circumstances can become all consuming. Fear, worry, pain, sleep deprivation, anxiety, pressure, loneliness, whatever it might be, we can have times in our lives where we feel like we're just in the zone of survival, that we're simply living our lives for the next Friday, the half term, when the mortgage is paid off, when the debts are paid, when I lose weight, when I pass the exams. Perhaps this year we've all lived in the, when lockdown's over, when the restrictions are lifted, when the vaccine is here. But this passage exhorts us to live for God, to live to please him. And the good news is that that isn't dependent on anything other than a commitment just to do that. The Bible tells us that Jesus is the same yesterday, today and forever. God is faithful and reliable and, he's a, and his mercies are new every morning, no matter what's going on in the world. So it's not reliant on circumstances or things going to plan. The best laid plans of mice and men often go awry. Now that saying comes from a poem entitled To a Mouse, and it was penned by Robert Burns in 1785. And basically the speaker in the poem is expressing his sorrow to the mouse whose nest he destroyed accidentally with a plough. Well, this has certainly been a year of nests being unexpectedly squashed by ploughs. No one could have predicted the way this year has ended. Well, almost no one. I think one of the positives of this year has been the enforced slowdown. We often say, stop the world, I want to get off. Well, for a short time, the world did feel like it had stopped. But it's at these times that God can have the space, the time, the room, and the opportunity to break into our lives and our best laid plans in a fresh way. This passage talks about holiness, and that means to be set apart for God. We've been forced apart from many aspects of our lives in the last few months. We've been forced apart from our families, and that's been really hard. But that sense of being apart is something that God wants us to choose to do in the way that we live for him, to give him the time and the space to meet with us, to transform us, to shape our priorities, God wants us to be pure, the very best that we can be for him. Not contaminated, not watered down, but flourishing in his love and his perfect plan 